huge tax probe is launched into American candy stores on London's Oxford Street. A huge tax scam investigation has been launched into a string of American candy stores swamping Oxford Street and the West End of London including the major kingdom of sweets chain, breaking news can exclusively reveal. There has long been concern about the deluge of tacky, overpriced US-themed sweet and souvenir shops that have been taking over traditional high street retailers on one of the world's most famous shopping streets, including HMV's old flagship site. There are now at least 10 candy stores between Marble Arch and Tottenham Court Road stations alone, equating to roughly one every 200 yards, with some offering other services like foreign currency exchange. The council is now probing more than 30 shops across the West End for allegedly avoiding business rates amounting to at least £7.9 million. These are owned by a variety of companies and, in addition to candy stores selling packets of Jolly Rancher sweets for as much as £45 include shops offering other items like souvenirs and vaping equipment. Kingdom of Sweets, which has more than 15 branches, is among the shops being investigated by Westminster City Council for allegedly avoiding business rates, Breaking News understands. We can also reveal the brand and some of its rivals are using TikTok, Instagram and YouTube to lure children into their store. There has been a boom in videos where youngsters try super sour or sweet American treats and drinks for the first time. Others film staff giving visitors, including some apparently still in primary school, free sweets just for popping in and giving a fist bump. Campaign group Action on Sugar said the stores are exploiting a loophole that means imported US chocolates and candy do not face the same restrictions on sugar content as UK-made products. It means the American-themed superstores sell products containing almost treble the amount of sugar a British child should consume daily, even in a small single serving. Action on Sugar called the targeting of children, appalling. Officials probing retailers' tax affairs are understood to be concerned about a purported tactic whereby bosses using a single store name set up numerous limited companies to serve as its legal owner, before closing the companies prior to them being liable for business rates. Two companies which share directors with Kingdom of Sweets, Croftray Limited and Old Green Limited, have already been wound up owing £2 million in rates. The council is also understood to be concerned about another alleged tactic used by rivals of Kingdom of Sweets which see shops set up in empty buildings to avoid the landlord having to pay business rates on an empty premises, before closing and leaving before the shopkeepers become liable for the tax themselves. There is no suggestion Kingdom of Sweets has been doing this. A spokesman for Kingdom of Sweets said, We are a respectable business paying all relevant taxes and business rates. The issue of rival stores opening and then closing without paying business rates has had a detrimental impact on our trading in an extremely difficult environment. As a responsible business we support plans to clamp down on this practice and will continue working with Westminster Council. There is no suggestion any of the shops pictured in this article are under investigation. Westminster's trading standards team are also looking at inflated prices at a range of chains including up to £20 for a single bag of sweets and £10 for a cereal box of Lucky Charms. This is in addition to claims some stores have no prices on their goods at all. Some of the stores are also accused of selling out-of-date food and counterfeit products, with the planning department also looking into whether these premises are advertising illegally. Councillor Adam Hugg, leader of Westminster City Council, said, Anyone walking down Oxford Street is struck by the ever-expanding number of US-style sweet shops and poor-quality souvenir outlets. They are not only an eyesore, they are a threat to the status and value of what is supposed to be the nation's premier shopping street. The problem is that owners of buildings are turning a blind eye to those who sublet them as it means they are not liable for business rates. That's why we have a rash of US candy stores in prestige locations. This needs to stop and we will be stepping up pressure on landlords to make it clear they are responsible for Oxford Street being overrun with these kinds of stores. The people selling overpriced sweets are cheating the UK taxpayer and very often swindling their customers into the bargain. The American sweet shops found across Oxford Street are following in. The footsteps of a pick and mix stand located in a shopping center in Barnsley. Chase Manders started importing American sweets to Britain in 2004 and found they were a massive hit with locals in South Yorkshire. 
company's house now lists Mr. Manders as the sole director of London-based Kingdom of Sweets Limited which was incorporated in 2017. The 40-year-old opened his first Kingdom of Sweets Oxford Street shop in 2012 and his stores were very much the main player in that market for the next few years with five other shops opening across the capital. Around the same time the M&M's World in Leicester Square, owned by the confectionery giant Mars, opened in 2011, which was 14 years after the company's first outlet was launched in Las Vegas. But by 2018, competitors such as Candy Shop, American Candy, and American Candy World began to emerge, with Kingdom of Sweets claiming that rivals were visiting their stores and taking photographs. There was then a surge of openings during the pandemic as people made the most of being able to avoid shutting during lockdowns because they were classed as essential retailers for selling food. Now, a range of the shops operate under different names but offering almost entirely the same products and very similar decoration, and perhaps the most controversial one is at the old HMV flagship store which unceremoniously turned into a sweet shop in February. It comes amid concerns the rash of American candy stores is harming the West End status as an attractive shopping destination. The boom in the colorful shops filled with loud music and bubblegum smells has swallowed other stores struggling to survive, with many famous retailers such as Topshop, House of Fraser and Debenhams closing their doors. The new West End Company business group pointed out that the shops were not in keeping with the evolving face of the high street, nor modern shopping habits. The present-day American sweet shops followed the lead of Chase Manders, now 40, who started importing U.S. sweets to Britain 18 years ago and successfully sold them on a pick-and-mix stand in a shopping center in Barnsley. His Kingdom of Sweets brand opened its first store in London by 2012 before a further five shops opened across the capital, but by 2018 his employees noticed that competitors were visiting the stores and taking photographs. The sweets then started to pop up in normal London tourist shops as another offering, and now, a range of the shops operate under different names but with almost entirely the same products and very similar decoration. Then, the development that really caused a stir on social media came earlier this year when the famous HMV store was unceremoniously turned into a sweet shop, with the original, his master's voice, sign and logo covered up. It was initially partially covered in February to read, his master's American candy. Then last month the whole of the sign was covered up with black cladding before being decorated with US flags and the words, Candy World. Among the names of the other sweet shops on Oxford Street are, American Candy Land, Worldwide Candy, The House of American Candy, American Candy, Candy Surprise, Candy Shop, and, American Candy World. However, Kingdom of Sweets is still the best-known brand, and describes itself on its website as offering a never-ending variety of memory lane pleasers, children's favorites and inspirational gift ideas, adding, we stock products loved by all generations, and our shops are open till late every day. We are the masters of repeat business, and other shops love to be nearby. The company adds that its desire to create a dazzling one-stop confectionery experience for all the family encouraged expansion into larger stores, culminating in the flagship store on London's Leicester Square, the biggest collection of sweets in the country. Shokofe Hajazi, head of insight at food trends agency The Food People, told Breaking News, Consumers have a huge appetite for all things nostalgic right now, which has boosted the popularity of American candy and confectionery. It may seem counterintuitive, but actually UK consumers have a strong sense of borrowed nostalgia from the USA. Essentially, even though they may not have grown up eating American favorites like Hershey's chocolate, Pop-Tarts or s'mores themselves, for some, those treats feel as familiar and comforting as British classics like custard, trifle or crumble. Asked if the pandemic had accelerated the trend, she added, definitely. When faced with stress and uncertainty, people often turn to food for distraction and escapism. During the pandemic, lots of people turned to sweets and confectionery in particular, as they looked for ways to indulge their inner child and be reminded of simpler, happier times, even if only for a moment. Indeed, the appetite for nostalgic and childhood treats didn't stop at American candy. We've also seen dishes like tater tots, sprinkle cake, jelly and custard trending. And on whether the trend will continue, she said, consumers can't seem to get enough of American food culture, so there's certainly still space for the trend to grow.
And it's not just American sweets that are making an impact, but also other stateside favorites like deep pan pizza, slushies, corn dogs and ice cream floats. In fact, several well-known American restaurant chains have recently been expanding in the UK. So the American influence on high streets and in shopping centers, looks set to stay and grow. Some of the shops on Oxford streets are designed to be like mini theme parks, with the Kingdom of Sweets offering aroma-diffusing technology to persuade customers to buy Twinkies, Oreos, and Cheetos. But many of the shops were empty when breaking news visited them, with some workers fearing the boom in American sweets may come crashing down. One employee admitted the store was once filled with American sweets and has returned to selling London souvenirs in half the space to meet customer demand. Others are also specializing in other tourist products along with vaping products and phone cases, but the shops do still sell candy for very high prices. One employee said, the entire shop used to sell just sweets. We brought back souvenirs because that's what the customers wanted. There are just too many sweet shops in Oxford Street to make it worthwhile. Bosses at American Candy World have claimed that the average customer spends between £25 and £30 on six to seven items and that the much-criticized expensive prices of stock are due to high import fees. Workers have put the popularity of American sweet shops down to the boom of YouTube and TikTok videos where people try American snack foods for the first time. However, shoppers spoken to breaking news were split on the rise of American sweet shops on Oxford Street. Joanna Ionesca, 37, an accountant from East London, brought her daughters Isabel, 9, and Caitlin, 7, to buy Wonka chocolate bars. She said, I love them. I think it's a really nice treat for the kids to go and try something a little bit different. I suppose American sweets are the most popular because there's a big selection. I'd personally like it if they could try and introduce Italian sweets. There are so many lovely things out there. Piano teacher Ray Kunta, 35, who was with her daughter Marina, 9, from Belsize Park, North London, bought toxic waste sour sweets. She said, it's very colorful and it's very eye-catching. We're not big sweet eaters and I never let Marina have sweets as a little child. I'm not massively into sweets, they're pretty bad for your teeth. I think the chocolate is better in Britain than in America, but there's a bigger selection of sweets here than you'd get in British shops. It shows the popularity of American goods. Jennifer McConnell, 34, who was with her son Jacob, 5, said, We live in Spain and there's nothing like it there. I spent some time living in California so I suppose it's a bit of nostalgia as well. It sounds weird, but I think it's actually great for kids to have a healthy attitude to sweets, something that can be enjoyed but to not overdo. I don't have sweets in the house, typically. But more importantly, nobody wants to see the loss of jobs which would come with a long-term decline of an Oxford Street district filled with empty or derelict buildings. Catherine Jenner, nutritionist and director at Action on Sugar, told Breaking News, It's appalling that this new breed of American candy shops are taking advantage of the pandemic to sell their sweet treats, many of which lead to excessive calorie intake, as well as causing huge damage to teeth. Supermarkets and manufacturers are supposed to be reducing sugar in sweet foods and are now subject to legal restrictions on how they can promote unhealthy foods. Imported U.S. products are not subject to the same restrictions which is outrageous. If anything, these empty stores should be offered to businesses that champion good health rather than adding to the problem and costing the NHS. Jace Tyrell, chief executive of the New West End Company Business Group, told Breaking News that the sweet and souvenir shops are not in keeping with the evolving face of the high street, nor modern shopping habits. He said, the COVID pandemic has been incredibly challenging for high streets across the UK, and unfortunately Oxford Street is no different. Over the last two years some struggling retailers have had to make the difficult decision to close their doors for good, which has led to an increasing number of empty retail units being filled with sweet or souvenir shops, so that landlords can guarantee the payment of business rates. We don't believe that these stores are in keeping with the evolving face of the high street, nor modern shopping habits. We are therefore working with a number of local partners to revitalize Oxford Street and are already welcoming a number of new and exciting brands to the area. The likes of IKEA, Gymshark and Swingers are enhancing the makeup of the district, while we are also utilizing empty retail units to create pop-up stores that support local small businesses. 
However, to further improve the high street we need the support of the government, starting with the long overdue reform of business rates. High business rates are currently strangling a range of viable businesses that could otherwise be major contributors, not only on Oxford Street, but also across high streets up and down the country. Dot. Created by Zero Zero Breaking News. Daily breaking and more news. Please. Subscribe.